Man, what is up? What is up? You already know what it is, man. Welcome to another episode of the Vance Barnes Pod. I am him. He is me, Glitch and Matrix, your host, Vance Barnes. Man, I appreciate y'all tapping in. Episode 55, we here, we back. It's up, man. It's been fun, man. This pod's been fun, man. Appreciate y'all rocking with me. If you're watching on YouTube, um, go hit that subscribe button, comment below. If you are listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, like, rate, share, um, all that good stuff, man. Appreciate y'all rocking with me, 55 deep. Man, it's crazy. I'm going to start off the pod. This isn't like a um, religious pod or anything or a religious podcast, but if you know me, you know faith is a huge part of my life, so it's just... Something that I always speak on, something that I try to always live by, you know what I mean? And it was crazy because I think we talked about a last pod, like, um, like praying for certain stuff, right? And asking and looking and being intent. Well, this week, like, I was I was praying for something and just talking to God and communicating with Him all week and all week. I was just repeating to myself. I was like, I was like, talk to me, Lord, talk to me. I was like, talk to me, God. What is it that you need me to see? What is it that you need me to hear? Um, just talk to me. I just kept repeating that to myself. Talk to me. Talk to me, Lord. And so there was something specific that I was praying about, right? And it was crazy because I had listened to the sermon, right? I listened to the sermon. And the pastor was talking about how when we pray for things, we have to be intently seeking him and intently listening, right? Because we might miss, like, just as the just as God is working, the devil is working too, and the devil is gonna try and th throw things at us to distract us from like seeing what it is that God needs to see, right, or from hearing whatever it is that God needs us to hear. Um, because especially in my walk with my walk in faith, I've, I've realized that sometimes God will be, um, sometimes He'll throw it right in your face, like what you need to see, what you need to hear. Here's your sign. Here you go, right there, right. But most of the time, I realize that God is super subtle and quiet with the way he talks to us because he wants us to intentionally seek him out and like consciously be thinking about him and how we can grow closer to him, right? So going off that, like I said, I was praying for something all week. And today, twice today, he like, I had a dream about it last night and like didn't even think anything about it. And then this guy at the gym I was talking to, having a random conversation with him, he had said something to me that didn't hit me until like, literally I was about to finish my workout like an hour later. And I, th and I sat there and I thought to myself, I go, man, I go, this is exactly what that pastor was talking about. Like I almost just missed two big signs that God was trying to give me, right? And I was just so happy because like, I was like, okay, God, I hear you, right? I hear you, I'm listening, I hear you. And I, I, like, I, I felt great because I was like, this is the sign that I was praying for, but I almost missed it because I was just, I just blew it off as like, oh, it's just another dream, right? Or I blew it off as like, oh, it's just a, that guy just said that in the conversation, like, oh, he's just talking, right? But I was like, no, like, it wasn't just another conversation. It wasn't just another dream. It was God speaking to me through these things and telling me like this is what I've been telling you and it was like spot on for what I've been praying about and I was like all right now I can now I can act on it right now I can give me that uh reassurance and that faith that I needed to keep going um and so I just want to start the pot off with that man that's that story it was, it was cool to me to see that um and to realize that in real time um because your walk with faith your walk with God is not something that's this it's not easy all the time right but just hearing other people's stories in a story like that, maybe it helps some of you guys out that's going through that right now. Um, but yeah, man, intently seek him intently and don't just blow things off as, you know, just like be conscious of what you're praying for, what you're asking for, and then listen and look because it's right there. He'll, he's gonna answer you, right? He's gonna answer you. He's gonna give you the answer. You just gotta pay attention. Man, so I guess the topic of the podcast this week like the what i wanted to talk about this week is not settling for anything less than you feel like you deserve right and I, I guess this this stems from you know this week or last week whatever i think it was thanksgiving week i i worked like 
42 hours that week, right? And I was sitting at the desk at my job and after working those 42 hours, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, man, man, this is, this ain't it, right? This is just not it. And, you know, I, I think I recited it before this podcast, but my favorite, like one of my favorite J. Cole bars um, is, you know, from 03 Adolescent, my favorite J. Cole song ever, he talks, he's like, um, dreaming quiet, trying to dodge a suit and tie, right? Dreaming quiet, trying to dodge a suit and tie, who am I? And it's like that question of like, man, who am I? Who am I to be, like, say I'm better than the 95? Who am I to be dodging? Uh, suit and tie or it's like man who am I like I'm trying to find myself I'm, I know that this suit and tie uh, white collar job I know that this 9 to 5 ain't me so who am I right um, what's one of my favorite J. Cole bars and I say that because I was just at the desk I'm like thinking I'm like man man this is not it like I, I just refuse to let the days just go by while I make money for somebody else right um and it's just not for me. I would probably say this again in this podcast. Like if that's you and you love that and that like that makes you happy, like whatever your job is, continue with that, right? Do what makes you happy. There's just some things that aren't for some people. And for me, it's just that nine to five like lifestyle. And I get it. Some jobs require that. Some jobs like but you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? It's just that that, you know, nine to five live for the weekend. It's just not me because having secure money, like I said, I'll give many examples throughout the podcast, but I understand why some people like do it, or a lot of us. I understand why a lot of people do it because it's secure money. You know, like you get a check every couple weeks, every whatever it is, um, and in a lot of cases, right, especially my age, our generation, right, mid twenties late 20s early 30s whatever it is in a lot of cases you just have to do it at some point you chasing your dream or not you have to put food on the table you have to be taking in money you have to like provide for yourself for your family whatever it is um but doing it forever on a consistent basis like seeing my life that way for the next x amount of years um yeah it's an absolute no for me absolute no like i said i understand i understand how people get locked into that because sometimes when doubt creeps in we start to think like oh well maybe i i can just do this for the rest of my life like oh this is easy this is like somewhat fun like yo maybe i can just do this uh maybe working here making some amount of money isn't so bad like i make 60k a year that's that's great you know what i mean and um honestly i have those thoughts actually quite a bit myself like uh and whenever i have those thoughts i just snap back into reality and i'm like fans this isn't not you like this isn't what you want i just know those thoughts are like doubt and fear creeping in my mind it's like because deep down i know that um these thoughts are only me settling for less than what my heart truly desires it's only me settling for less than what i truly know i deserve but sometimes what you know you deserve, what you know that you want, goals, aspirations, dreams, it looks so unattainable at times, right? We talk about it all the time, like you just can't see it sometimes. So that whatever is right in front of you, this nine to five salary job, whatever it is, is right in front of you, you have it already. So it's like, oh man, maybe I could do this for a my life. But deep down, you know you wanna start that business. Deep down, you know you wanna um, you know, start your entrepreneurship. Deep down, you know you wanna do this. It's just you watering down and selling for less right because it's just like how many of us trick ourselves into thinking that mediocrity is you know what we want how, how many of us trick ourselves into thinking into watering down our goals or our dreams just because we're at a spot where they seem so far away and i know some some people are probably out there thinking like oh man like i gotta make money like we just talked about you gotta make money you gotta provide somehow um, what do I do? And uh, that's what we talked about last podcast was just what do you do when you're still right? When you just don't know what to do. Um, I think about this all the time when I read Arnold Schwarzenegger's autobiography. And he talked about how he was doing construction. He was had a full time construction job while he was 
you know, basically a full-time bodybuilder while well, I believe he was going to acting classes while he was trying to learn English better. Like he was doing all these things. He talked about how he only slept six hours a night and how he was trying to squeeze everything he had, had out of the 24 hours, right? And it just like puts into our brain, it puts into our mind, like, man, there's some aspect of our lives that we have to lose out on if it, you know, if we truly want to attain our dreams, our goals, whatever it is, whether that be sleep, whether that be social life, whether that be video games, Netflix, whatever it may be. I think you got to understand that if you have your dream, you have your nine to five chase, do both. But don't settle for the nine to five just because it's the easy thing to do, right? Don't just settle um, because it's what you're doing right now. Keep the dream in mind. It's funny, I was just watching uh, Khabib, the Nurmagomedov, or however you pronounce his name, the, you know, one of the goats of the UFC, um, talk about how he sees a lot of fighters, right? He sees a lot of fighters trying to, they try to do both. And in a sport, he says like fighting, when you make it to a certain level, you have to give up the outside stuff and focus solely on fighting. You have to get your rest in, you have to train twice a day, you have to do all these things because it's just you and the other man when you get locked in and it's basically like who's been putting in more work so you have to put in the work. Um, and it was interesting hearing him talk about that, how he sees fighters still trying to hang on to their nine to five, or still trying to hang on to some other stuff, their social life and other things. When it's like, man, you have to dedicate yourself fully to this if you want it in this MMA game. And it's the same thing. Like some of us are still trying to hold on to our safety net. Some of us are still trying to hold on to comfortability some of us are still trying to hold on to what's easy in our lives instead of fully diving into the pool of our dreams instead of fully just being like okay i'm gonna make this sacrifice for a little bit or for a, you know a year two years whatever it is just dive fully into my dream and see where i can get to right but like i said the easy thing to do is to hold on to that comfortability hold on to what's easy and what we know because not a lot of us are are willing to be in that uncomfortable zone, right? I think also a lot of us, sometimes we get like short-term memory, right? We think of only where we are right now as our life persists in the present instead of thinking about where we want to be five years from now, 10 years from now. I think we just get so caught up in where we are right now that we can we can only see this far in front of us instead of like stacking days and realizing that this is where I want to be at in five years right it's hard like I said it's hard to to, to to continue to chase the dream when you can't see it right when it's not right in front of you but a lot of the times what I like to do is I like to reminisce um, and I do it quite often I'll, I'll think about where life was for myself a year ago, two years ago, five years ago. And I'll think, and I'll be like, man, it's so crazy how that felt like just yesterday, right? It's so, and it's sometimes, it's scary. It's it's honestly scary to think about like, man, if that felt like just yesterday, that means the time is flying. Even though the days sometimes feel slow and they drag on. If high school felt like just yesterday, that means one day I'm going to wake up and be at like 35 and it's, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's scary sometimes. It, it just shows you that li like life is always moving. But then at the end of the, that, those scary thoughts, I often think how exciting it is to know and be like, man, look how far I've come since, you know, 20, 21, like in the last four or five years. And you can think and you can be like, man, just imagine if I locked in each and every single day, how far I'd be at 30 or at 35 or at 40 like that's all the always the exciting parts so always think like man it truly puts in a perspective like days where you don't want to do stuff just remind yourself that man this you only get one shot at this life thing man and squeezing everything you can out of the 24 that you got 
each and every day, just focusing on stacking days um, and really locking in, maximizing, you know, each 24 really puts into perspective, like, man, I can really do something. Um, I can really go and grow and take this thing as far as I want to, man. So I got to have a friend that, you know, we talk all the time about, you know, where we are in life right now and where we want to get to. Right. And this friend works multiple jobs, um, mid twenties. He's, you know, still living with his parents, which is obviously, you know, great, save money, do what you got to do. But it's crazy because we, when we talk about the jobs and stuff, he always told me like, man, I just need a one solid job, 40 hours a week. Like I'm tired of working multiple jobs just to hit 40 hours. Like it's crazy that we have that 40 hour nine to five like drilled in our minds of like, that's what I need to be doing right now. That's what I feel like I need to be doing. And he's chasing his dream right now, but he's like, he's like, man, I'm, I'm trying to chase this dream, but I'm trying to find the right opportunity but I also to find that right opportunity and, and I've already had some job interviews. I need to, what I'm seeing is I just need to build my resume, right? He's like, I just, he's like, I just need to build my resume, but in order to build my resume, I need to get more opportunities and more jobs. Um, but in the meantime, instead of like doing that, I have to work and make money. And it's all that says that same cycle over and over again. of like, I need to put, like make money, but I also want to step into my dream. And to do that, I need to find a job that like, it's hard. I feel like they set us up because people want you to build this great resume of all five years work experience, being the, the man, like a manager, or this and that. And then you're like, man, how am I going to, you know, I could do that. But, you know, some places want you to do an internship. It's like, bro, I can't, can't do all this. Um, it's just not realistic. Some of the like requirements that these people or that these jobs are looking for. And it's crazy because I like, we, we were talking and he'll just say that he'll always be like, man, this life thing is crazy, man. It, it's it's crazy how, uh, how it's kind of structured. And so we talked about how you see why people like eventually give up on their dreams, right? You can, you can see why, you know, you graduate college then you want to get out and you want to get your own place and you want to live a certain lifestyle and maybe you get you get married, you want to have kids and now your sole focus is on, oh, well, okay, I got to provide for myself and my family. How can I do that? And all of a sudden, days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, and then months turn into years and you look back and you look up and you're like, man, where did the time go, right? And then you feel like you're too old to chase your dream. Like you don't know, like you're, Let's say you're in your late 20s, early 30s, and you're like, man, I can't, I got a good job. It's too late. I don't want to chase my dream. Um, but I think we have to realize that if you're around whatever age it is, it's never too late. I think that's that's the, the biggest thing. But also just being like, man, you're like, if you're in your tw late 20s, early 30s, it's still very young still very young in terms of going after what it is that you want. Like I did some research on some people that kind of came upon success later in life. Um, Stan Lee, the founder of Marvel, creator of a bunch of the Marvel comics and characters. Um, he didn't create his first comic book until age 39. Samuel Jackson didn't get his first big movie break until 43. Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, didn't buy his first, like he didn't purchase it until 52. And Oprah Winfrey didn't get her show until age 32, which is the youngest out of these four people that I just, just named. But it's crazy that for some reason, especially during the social media age, that people have this perception of like, oh, if I'm not a millionaire by 25, then I fail. Or if I didn't accomplish my dreams by 30, then I failed. And I don't understand. I mean, I understand why it is because people get on social media and they start comparing to other things, start comparing their lives where they're at. And people think that they're supposed to get out of college or have this all figured out by a certain age. And it's just like, man, there's plenty of other stories like that. I think another thing that will help us is not letting other people dictate what it is that or how it is that we see ourselves right 
um, this the topic of the day is not settling for anything less than what you feel you deserve. Sometimes people, whether that be our bosses, coaches, man, whatever it is, people around us, even friends, will try and limit us to what they think, you know, we are, what they think our, like, limitations are. And I know, like, maybe you've had that too, of, like, you're telling something to a friend, and all of a sudden they, like, say something, like, oh, do you really think you can do that? Or, man, that's going to be... I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, man, why is it that we don't, or that why we shouldn't share our dreams with everybody? Like, how would I explain that to somebody? I know we had a podcast on it. But I was like, if somebody asked me that really quick, how would I explain that? And I used this example in my head. I was just like, I would just simply say it's because sometimes when you tell somebody something that's really hard, like, you know, it's really hard. Like, I, oh, I want to do this. Sometimes they might say their first reaction without even like knowing it good or bad. They might be like, oh, man, yeah, but I, I heard that's really hard. Or, oh, man, yeah, it's really hard to become a, you know, have your own practice as a doctor. Or, yeah, man, it's really hard to get into Harvard, right? And it's just like right there with them not even consciously thinking about it. They just try like they just whatever they said may might have had an impact on you. And limiting what it is that you can think because now you might walk away from that conversation being like ah oh, man yeah like maybe he's right it is really hard to go be a doctor or man it is really hard to get into harvard like not a lot of people get accepted and it's just limiting so like it's, we can't let other people limit us or put us in a box of what they think we should do whether they mean to or not it's having a goal having a vision and being like this is where i see myself this is where I want to get to, the top of the mountain. This is the top of the mountain for me. I'm not selling for anything less than that because once God put it on your heart, once you thought about it, once you dreamt about it, it became attainable. It became a possibility. Now it's not just climbing half up the mountain and being like, oh, well, I, I made it this far. Like, that's this is great enough. Or it's not being like, oh, well, like somebody said there's, once I get this high on the mountain, like there's some different stuff I gotta go through like it's can't settle for less than what we think we deserve because like I said at the top of the pot it's easy to hold on to comfortability it's easy to hold on to easiness right because like I said that top of the mountain that climb it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be you know, the higher you climb, the tougher it's going to be. Man, episode 55, man. Appreciate y'all tapping into another episode of Advanced Barnes Podcast. Until next time, peace.